right, well, I'm gonna do a little intro for this video, but I'm not looking the, the best right now. So, I'm just gonna let you see my little view into town today as I'm heading into town to get some stuff and do some bookkeeping work for the farm. Um, I know I haven't, haven't done any videos in a few weeks. It's really just been hot and there hasn't been a whole lot of anything going on. We've had some projects that we were working on completing and I've got one of those completed. So that's what the video is gonna be about today. Um, I finished my outdoor tortoise enclosure for our red foots. So I'm gonna have some of that and I think I have a few little updates and then I'm gonna post some videos from our trip to Arkansas and that's what's going to be on there today but it's just been it's been hot and there hasn't been a whole lot going on nothing really much has happened on the farm with any of the animals everything's basically been about the same so that's just kind of how it's been headed into town this is the view i was going to do it i had to pull over because anyway it's been rainy and it's supposed to rain some more today but the weather's cooling down just a little bit and I've got a few other things going we've been working on my mom's cottage and I'm gonna have a video update for that as soon as it's done we're waiting on having the uh, electric company come run the electric we have to have the septic put in the air conditioner put in and then all of the water hooked up and then her cottage is done and she'll be able to move in. So I'll have, I've got video of that from the time we had the building and brought in to now. We've been working on that since May. So it's been a while that we've been working on that, but it's almost done. So hopefully here in the next week or two, they were supposed to put the electric in last week and they didn't do it. So hopefully they'll do that this week. And then we worked on the tortoise enclosure to get that done and built. I've had a couple of spiders molt out and so I've got some molts for them. And that's basically been it. Not much been going on with the alpacas. No more babies have been born. Everybody's still pregnant that was pregnant or looked like they might be pregnant. But I'm expecting they won't have babies until September or October on any of them. So there's that. Uh, we did find out our middle daughter was is pregnant and she's pregnant with twins. So that's exciting. But other than that, there hasn't been anything going on. So anyway, we'll get on with the video. Rel, smile. Smile at Mimi.
that little thingy right there. Yeah, step up. Yeah, step up. You can step on like the the green part that's connected to the bean stalk, but the actual like leaf part is like bumpy, so it's not gonna like, support a lot of leaves or any leaves. No. So see, you can step on the green thing. Alright, so I wanted to make an outdoor enclosure for Allie's three red foots. And so I got this built for me. My daughter's boyfriend built it. It is, holy crap, that's a big hornet. I don't know what, it, it, it's a big hornet. So it is the, I'll step out here. It is on the side of our house. It's the full length of our house, which is 22 feet. And then it is four feet wide. So it's fairly large. This side of the house gets afternoon sun, um, but I did this lattice and you can see when you come in here, just how shady it is. I think the only time of the day that it's gonna be, that it's not gonna be super shady is gonna be right at noon. And I'm gonna add tons more plants in here. Um, and I'm gonna get some grass seed to get this grass growing. But I put both of these little pots in here to start with. And so this, these, um, they'll die out in the winter, but they come back in the summer. And then Jesse also dug out this little pond for me and concreted it in. It's pretty deep, but I added some 
concrete blocks to raise it up and then I added a bunch of uh, small pebbles to it and I could fill it up way deeper than it is right now but right now it's let's see if I can get over here without getting stunned by this hornet it's only it's only about bad up to there so it's not super deep which is good for them right now because they're small right now and then once they're full grown I can take all the stones out and they'll be able to get in there deeper and still be able to soak and submerge and get submerged in it that they, they are land tortoises so they don't really get in the water uh, very often other than to soak but I've been out here for ever my allergies are killing me and then I dug this out it I dug it down a little bit and so they can get underneath there and it's softer and they can dig and then they can climb and get on top and I need to get some more dirt to throw on top of it but I didn't have any more after we dug things out but then they'll be able to get on top of it too but mainly it's so they can go underneath and they can get out of the weather they can get out of the sun they can dig down into softer cooler um, dirt to cool down if they need to cool down and then once it all starts growing up in here and gets a lot more grass and we get a lot more plants in here they'll be much better off so I'm probably gonna go tomorrow and buy all the plants and then come start putting in the plants and then probably get some grass seed and start doing the grass seed but we brought them out here the small one right there I think is ivy and then that one that just got out that one should be Selena Selena used to be the smallest one but Ivy one of our cats somehow got Ivy out of the tank one day and she was missing in the house for about a week week and a half and I don't know if that's why she's so much smaller because she used to be the same size as Ivy Ivy and Selena were the same size but Selena is more of the yellow has more of the yellow color where Ivy had the red and then that little dude back there that's Bruce he's our boy um, and he's roughly the same size as Selena is right now um, but they get much bigger this is a good size for them to come out they won't be able to stay out here all winter unless I can figure out some way to provide heat but I might be able to bring them out here like on days in the winter when it's not so cold like if it's up in the 50s or 60s and there's some sun I can bring them out um, but I can't have them out at night when it's cold like that because I don't have any way for them they, these tortoises don't um, brumate like other tortoises do so they won't be able to I won't be able to leave them out in the winter time they'll have to go in in this in in the winter time and so I'm gonna set them up something in our garage where I can provide them heat and light in the garage and it'll be smaller to begin with and then I'll just have to add it it looks like she's gonna go and explore Bruce has always been kind of a scaredy cat and this one's just not coming out at all she's completely freaked out by this whole getting moved out here experience but we have a lot of humidity here in the summertime so that's good for their shells um, they need this species is a uh, tropical species so they need a lot more humidity than say the sulcatas do where the sulcatas are more of a savanna type tortoise these guys are from South America and they're from like rainforesty area areas and so they're used to a lot more um, cover a lot more ground cover a lot more uh, moisture in the air a lot more moisture in their substrate so that's exactly what these guys need so it's good here in the summertime because it's so humid out here in the summertime 
and once they have plenty of places to hide and stuff like that it'll be better for them but they'll be good for a few days until I can get start getting some plants out here and then this grass will just start growing so. okay all right I gotta go get uh, dinner out of the oven Oh, and I, I didn't mention why it's so high. So it is four feet high with a door. There's the door behind me. I've got like a, I got blocks here to keep the door from swinging inwards and to keep the dogs from being able to push on it. But the reason why I did it so high, so I wouldn't necessarily need to have done it high like this. You know, I could have done it like say two feet high or even, you know, and, and that have been high enough even when they're full grown. But I did it high like this because we have the dogs and I didn't want the dogs to be able to get in here because the dogs would get in here and they would hurt the turtle, hurt the tortoises. So that's why it's tall like this. So that way the dogs can't get in and the tortoises are safe when the dogs are out. So I've been sitting out here for a little while. Ivy here. And that one, yes, that one is Ivy. We weren't, I wasn't 100% sure. Ivy used to be bigger than Selena. But Ivy here has just decided to pop her head out and is still sitting there. Selena has backed herself up into a corner over there and she can literally see everything inside the enclosure and Bruce right here has been exploring and eating grass so so far everybody's out Bruce seems to be the most content although Bruce isn't the smartest dude in the bunch He's the one that always ends up on his back somehow. And he's literally been trying to eat rocks. But he's exploring and checking things out. Hopefully, Ivy will decide to start exploring soon. When it starts getting dark here in a little bit, I'm going to put them all into their cave. So they know where their cave's at. And they know where they have shelter for the night. It'll stay warm enough tonight that they'll be fine, but I'm still gonna put them in their cave. But everybody's looking good. Ivy is, I think probably about, I don't know. She's probably about four inches or so. And then Selena and Bruce, oh, they're probably about six or seven inches. And we saw some, I'd actually never seen red foots full grown. And when we went to hot springs, we saw um, some full grown red foots. So this enclosure is going to be great for them. Because even when they're full grown, it'll they'll have plenty of space for all three of them to move around and have their own spots. So it looks like Ivy is gonna finally go exploring. So yep. Got an entire car full of plants for the tortoise enclosure. The those are for outside of the enclosure. They're safe for the tortoises to eat, but they're for outside. They're gonna be bushier plants. And then I got the grasses, and then I got some rose bushes. Don't know if you can see them back there because I'm in my car trying to get something to drink. But got stuff for the tortoises enclosure. The vermiculites from the tarantulas, because I always need vermiculite when I make up their soil. But got that so far. Probably get some more plants next year. 
depending on how these grow. The rose bushes will get a little bit wider, so won't have a lot of space, but it'll provide lots of shade and cover for them, which they like. And then I also got some hoses and things like that to set up a mister system for them. So they should be good. Alrighty, so I've got all my plants finally planted. It took me longer than I wanted to because it's been so hot and the ground was so hard. But I got all the plants along the outside planted. Probably plant some more next year. I got my mister system set up for them. I also added a lot more dirt and then I cut the front yard. And so I added all the grass cuttings in here. Plus I added a bunch of grass seed both below the grass cuttings and on top of the grass cuttings. So I have plenty. And I've got these little grassy plants in this corner, which will get bigger. And then I've got rose bushes, three rose bushes, which I'll probably do some other plants next year. This rose bush, I don't know, it looked really good. And then it looked like crap. I don't know if they just weren't watering them because I've been watering them. I don't know, we'll see if it survives. But anyway, all done up with the mister and these plants outside. So I'm hoping the mister is gonna add quite a bit. We got Uh, Ivy right over there. She's decided she's comfortable with her surroundings now. And then this one is Celine. And she's been enjoying herself mo moseying around. And Bruce was just, oh, there he is. And there's Bruce. So this misting system would allow them to have plenty of moisture and humidity back here. And then I can just spray when I need to spray. And then once this grass really starts growing and coming up, that'll give them tons of like areas to hide in. But it's really good for them to have all the sunlight and natural light. It's really good for their shells and their growth. So, so it is all complete. I actually was thinking though next, still have a bit of a mess to clean up. I was thinking next year though, I could only get, I meant to get two more of these plants, but this is all they had. So I put this one right here, which there probably should have been two right here in this spot, but I thought next year it would be nice to maybe do an arbor right here with some clematis on either side growing up and over, which would be pretty. And so I might do that next year, add an arbor with some clematis. They had clematis, but they were $40 a piece. I don't know. I might go back and get some more plants. And if I do, I'll just do an update. But. It is all complete. I still decided to leave this board because there still isn't enough dirt to build up on that side. And it gives them a little, another extra little spot to hang out. And it keeps them from falling off of that side. But they can climb all the way up there if they want. And hopefully it, the grass will grow and get really grassy on top and give them lots of places to hide. There they are. All right, so I'm going to do a little update on the ones that, the teas that molted. So this is Damiana and um, she molted a week ago. I was going to, I tried to feed her today, but she's still not ready to eat yet. 
when she molted, she scared me. She made a little, her little mat and then she flipped on her, I came home and she's flipped on her side, but not on her back. And there was plenty of moisture, but I gave her some, I gave her some more moisture and then she flipped back over onto her belly. And then and I've lost a few teas to bab molts and I was really hoping she was gonna be okay. And when I woke up the next morning, she was fine. So had her molt, it measured out about four and a half inches, five, four and a half, five inches, I can't remember. Um, so she is getting to be a big girl. All right, so the other one that molted was my GGB. Look at those colors, the blue on the legs. He's looking so pretty. He didn't hook out yet, so that's good. Get a little bit more time with him. His molt was, hold on, let me go look. All right, so his molt was just over four inches. And there he goes. He molted about two weeks ago. Um, and he ate last week. So this is his second feeding after the molt. He is doing really good. All right, and our last update is going to be the, our big girl, the T Blondie. Her molt came in at six inches. I still wasn't able to sex it. We're calling her her, but I still wasn't able to sex the molt. She uh, chewed it up real bad. We're going to see if she wants to eat. She molted about three or four weeks ago. About three weeks ago. Um and there was a roach in here i had dropped a roach in before i realized she was going to molt and then it got up underneath her hide and i couldn't get to it so i left it and um i do know she ate that one though like a week ago so i think it's been three weeks since she molted so we're going to drop in a nice big male dubia and see if she's ready to eat or not She might not be ready to eat it yet. Oh, nope, there she is. She, I don't need, and I think I missed, completely missed the takedown, sorry. I was trying to focus on her. Oh, but look how big and gorgeous she is. She is massive, she is like at least like as big as my fist. She is a big girl. Hopefully a girl. So pretty. And I have one more little update to show. Well, update, new guy. This is our brand new female um, sulcata tortoise. She's probably about eight weeks old. She's eating, I just got her in today. She's eating really good. She's super active. She's doing so well. I've got her, right now I've got her set up in a smaller tank, probably, I don't know, it's like a 20 gallon tank. It'll, she's, she's only about the size of a silver dollar, so it'll be good for her for a little while. She's not big enough to go outside with the red foots right now, and there's not a whole lot of reason to put her in a huge, huge tank. And I was going to put her in the red foots tank, so let's see. This is the red foots 
the tank that the red foots will use during the winter time. But we are having massive storms and it's a 40 gallon breeder. But we are having massive, massive storms. And so it's not safe to put them or to leave them outside right now. So they're currently inside their tank and all up underneath the cork bark. You can't even see them, but there she is. And I'll show you. So I, I put them in the, I put set this up in the monkeys, in the utility room with the monkeys and where the dogs sleep at night. They're all wet because they've been outside. Um, for right now, I just wrapped paper around the edges of it um, so they can't see out. Got plenty of substrate so she can dig down a little bit. She's got her little water dish and then she'll get soaked every day. Um, she eats mainly grasses um, and haze. So she's already ate a bunch of her stuff today. And then the tortoises, the redfoots, they have had their food today and they have a big water dish. And they'll get, as long as they're inside, they'll get soaked too. But what I've got is I've got this one and then this one are long 18 inch, um, like daylight, daylight bulbs. And right now it's, they're turned off. They turned off at eight o'clock tonight. And then hooked up to these cool little deals with these sensors are their basking lights. So they both have a basking light. Theirs are inside. And then hers is up here on the top. Um, and there's a little sensor down there where I want it to be. Same with the red fix. There's a sensor. There's a glare. Can't. There's a bad glare. Anyway, it's right. Oh, there you go. See it. Down there. And so that's where their sensors are. So when it, that area drops below what the temperature should be, the lights will automatically kick on. So it doesn't matter if I'm not here or not. I don't have to worry about it. It'll The lights will automatically kick on depending on that sensor. And so the red foots are set up for 88 degrees and she's set up for 89 degrees. And so it'll just constantly turn on and off as the temperature changes. And then these, these will turn on at eight o'clock in the morning and stay on till eight o'clock at night. So there she is for like, just kick back off. <laughs> 